Well, it's okay, welcome back to another four episodes of me playing golf in Scotland. This time it's in Murray on the Murray Firth and we've got four courses to play. We're going to incorporate another thing that's synonymous with Scotland and that is whiskey. I'll be doing some whiskey tasting along the next few days. But the one thing I've been, I've been in the car, this van for seven and a half hours and I wondered why have I traveled probably the longest I ever have done for a game of golf. Then you turn into this car park and you realize exactly why. My accommodation for the week would be at Golfview Hotel and I was overlooking Murray Golf Club and more from there later on in the week. But after a night's rest, it was off to my first destination. Yeah, we've arrived at Elgin Golf Club. I've played three holes, and uh, my first impressions after three holes, it seems a really well kept park and golf course. Tight tree lined, and uh, so far, really impressed. I don't understand how hole one is a higher stroke index than hole two. That's got me baffled. One was really tough. Um, did all right on two, made birdie, and then made bogey on the third. And uh, we've got a nice little par four, uh, par three rather, into the tree, small green. Seemed a perfect place to kick this one off. And we'll see how we get on for the rest of our uh, journey round uh, Murray. It's a decent strike if the club's right. Go, go. Oh, I'm saying go, it's just held on the back end. We've got a mixture of sun, a bit of breeze picked up, and like I said, this place looks interesting. We'll see how we get on. I'm well, delighted with that birdie. Uh, fairly straightforward little par three, but uh, the greens are really lively in terms of pace. And uh, I can imagine if they shave these down, they can have them razor sharp if they wanted them to. But then you walk off four, and you walk, get to the fifth tee box, which is stroke index one. And it's clearly clear to see why, straight from the get-go, it's sort of a par five, fairway weaves itself through bunkers and tree line and the first part is uh, it's asking a fair old bit of the tee shot we'll see how we get on with this part to start with ah. Well, it's leaked it out just a little bit right it's tight on that tree line and I don't think I'm gonna have the easiest the second shot but uh I think it was the pressure of what I was being asked to do there off that tee. Oof. Might have saved it there, you know. Might have just saved it. Oh, so a chance of saving par after what you've already seen is quite a scabby hole I've played so far. Can we save it? Oh, he's got it. Yeah, you see me, as soon as the drive leaked a little bit, I think we must have caught the trees. We had a second shot in, I played five iron, sort of pulled it low left, then left one short. And one shot and a par five though can save you. And it was that chip and a putt. Happy with that, great golf hole, and uh, again, if you just come this way, uh, by the looks of things, I think it's a uh, par three that you play back coming here, but how nice is that? Looks superb. I love the mature pines and uh, the tree line, it just really frames every hole that you play, and then if you spin it around this way, you'll see the par five that we just played from uh, this elevated green back down to the tee and the tree line there again. Super shaped hole, like I said, from uh, when we were still on the tee box. Our camera's gone back on because we've got to another interesting hole there, four, five and six. Uh, let's have a look at that, 215 par three is up next after stroke one. This is stroke five, 
215 going that way you can see the flag hopefully pick it up on the horizon big camber left to right bunker pitched up on that left hand side which is where you want to be landing really it's 215 and surprisingly enough i've only got five iron in hand but these greens um, fairways are still quite fiery and we're a little bit downwind that's the theory oh, i pulled it left pulled it left and Oh my word, thank God for my short game right now. That's another save. Well, what a tough par three. I should just swing it around there because if you go long left, ball's lost. That's one tough par three. I can't believe I just made three. After that tee shot on a 215 yard par 3, we'll take that. Right, so that's me front nine done and uh, do you know what, I, was, I thought it was quite tough, you know, there's a bit of a breeze picked up but the tree line, I think the difference with me is when I play links, the openness of it all, I don't get as tentative off the tee and I think once you see those tree lines and a few ropey drives and all of a sudden everything closes in on you, we're looking back down 10 that we'll play shortly and again, lots of mature trees left and right, you have to find that fairway, I've had to play a few low ones from out of the trees and uh, as you've seen, salvage some kind of score, but really tip top in terms of the condition of it. But later on today, we're going to uh, taste some whiskey at Glen Murray, and uh, maybe we'll just have a quick nip there while I get teed up for the 10th. Oh, Glen Murray have been crafting whiskey for 120 years in the heart of Speyside producing some of the finest malt whiskey. Following the journey of water and barley, making its way to cask, then to bottle, is a fascinating process. But ultimately, my real interest in whiskey is in the tasting, and unfortunately, that would have to wait until later on in the day. So that was a quick look at uh, Glen Murray Distillery and there was a really good tour but we didn't taste the whiskey that was early on the Monday morning and I like a whiskey as much as anybody but that was uh, pre this round but what we've done is we've got a few samples to take away and we'll be trying them at the end of this video hopefully on uh, the beach which you've seen just away from our hotel so that's how we'll finish this evening but for now I better uh, get a driveway or try and get a driveway on 10. It's at this point, the whiskey would have probably helped. Oh, that's a shot and I'm stepping away for the camera to have a look at that one. Yeah, that's a decent ball. Better left to right, my more comfortable shot when them trees are in play. We got one down the middle. Elgin was founded in 1906 in the heart of Murray and Speyside. The planting of many trees has changed the landscape of the course significantly in recent decades to become a mature tree-lined parkland that it is today. Talking on the back nine, I've just realised that uh, I think 10th we spoke about our little whiskey tasting and we're now on 15, so I missed a fair bit in between, but more of the same to be quite honest with you. Uh, tight tree line fairways, really fast greens and uh, some interesting holes in this one, another par three that I picked back up on. Uh, we're playing, what's it say off there, 180, I think I've just measured out more like 170 to the flag that I'm playing to today. Small little green, elevated position. Just really nice little par three. The wind's picked up a lot. If that's the right, it's left, it's not moving. Sit down. Oh, and I, oh, hello. 
Well, I got a friendly little kick there. I didn't quite read that one as it's uh, finished. There was a bit of a kick from left to right, which has brought me closer to the uh, flag. Wasn't quite the right club. I think we're still another 10 or 15 yards short, but uh, I always take the good bounces. We get plenty of bad ones. Oh, wow, well, I said it's a really nice green. You know, you can't quite see the movement from back there where we teed off. And uh, my ball pitched up on the green, up on this side, and has just sort of made its way right down back to the uh, well it fell off to the fringe really but there's so much almost uh yeah a real fall off from the front well we put camera on see if we can make a uh, birdie turn 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 uh, we make birdie i think uh good enough pace but not quite the right line That was a chance of birdie, it was a long chance for birdie, but another 16, a bit blind over the brow, but a uh, lovely green coming in from that sort of slightly elevated position. I'll take a four off there, I think it was one low on the stroke index, but um, like I said, coming in from that second shot in that you've seen, tree just overhangs on the, uh, on the right hand side of the shot. We managed to get just a little bit of draw and just cleared it probably again under club slightly it's difficult when you play in these kind of tree lined um, courses you don't know exactly you can't feel the wind that's the real tough part and the challenge and uh, you, you're struggling all the time to remember which way it's coming from and you you sit down in amongst it all and you persuade yourself there is no wind there and of course it's uh, you find out when your ball goes up in the air that it is 17 three, three, four. we're going two iron not a club I play that often, but we're on holiday. Oh, nailed it. Well, I say nailed it, that's a bit far left, isn't it? Sit down. Sit down, that's gone for miles. Right, last tee shot. It's been an enjoyable round. A pity that the weather rather has gone a little bit overcast in terms of what we've been able to film, but a really enjoyable round. 18 back to the clubhouse and don't forget we got that whiskey to taste yet which I'm really looking forward to. Right, I haven't drove too bad today. Let's see if we can find another fairway to finish. Oh and let rip there go. That's a big and to finish. Right, so golf's all over. Whiskey, whiskey tour early on today at uh, Glen Murray, and uh, now I finally get my chance to taste these things. I said I'd do it on the beach, and at the time the sun was shining, I thought this is the perfect thing. We'll go and taste whiskey on the beach later on. It's not quite as nice as planned, but anyway, we're going to start off with Glen Murray's sort of standard single malt. We'll give that a little bit of a taste, but I'm not that excited about this one, so we'll go. We'll go a little bit of this and uh, we've got the classic tin mug which is always used for whiskey tasting. It's a gentle warm up. The way I'd explain that one, it's kind of like, um, it, it's okay. It's nothing special. It's, a, it's your regular single malt. I think that's what we'll say. I ain't raving about it. I've got three others to try. I'm not keen on this before I even try it. I don't like peated whiskies. Uh, so I'll leave that until the end. But I do like these two. 
Well, I think I will. This one has got a port cask finish. It's a little bit uh, deeper in colour, as you can see. I'm hoping it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. I'm no whiskey expert, but I know what I kind of like. And uh, these kind of sherry cask, port cask uh, whiskies are quite nice. And yeah, we've got a sherry cask, which I'm going on to next. It's quite nice, isn't it? On the beach, it's a bit overcast and dull, but we've got a tin, of, tin mug and some whiskey. Right, a bit sweeter on the nose. That's a whole lot different for me. Bit sweeter, bit easier drinking, less harsh than that single malt that we started with. Much more my cup of tea or glass of whiskey in this case. I'm going to move on quite quickly, why not? Let's go into the sherry cask. It was a great tour by the way at Glen uh, Murray. Um, really enjoyed it. Right, I should also point out we've walked down here so uh, before anyone's worrying there's no more driving to be done, hence why we left it so late in the day. Right, sherry cask. I can't really smell a great deal of difference between that and the port cask, if I'm honest. I don't know really, very, very similar, but I think with the sherry cask I can taste still a little bit of smokiness in there, which uh, I wasn't quite getting in that port cask. Port cask is the one for me so far. We'll finish this off. Be rude not to. I've got to take our time a little bit. I've downed uh, that's three whiskies in uh, in a short space of time. Right. I want to finish with one that will make me pull a bit of a face, I reckon, and it's this. Um, yeah, peated finish. Peated single malt. It's an Elgin classic. But I've got a feeling. Oh God, no! I just do not like. Even the smell of this, it's a real kind of smoky, peaty finish, and it's just not the whiskey that I like. But in, um, why not? In for a penny, in for a pound, we'll try them all. Oh my word. Oh God, I don't like that stuff. I cannot believe I like whiskey and I'll drink pretty much any of them but the minute you go to something that's really kind of smoky and in that case that peated whiskey is exactly that even when it's coming into your nose it almost tastes medicinal and it's a real change up so we'll end up with a negative the first three certainly the port cask was the one for me and uh, a great tour very enjoyable if you're getting yourself up to uh, Murray then uh, certainly you've got to give the uh, whiskey tours a bit of a go and make sure you find out which one you like. And it ain't there.